guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today for another video. So this is actually the first time I'm sitting down to film since I came back from vacation. That was the last video I posted about me traveling to Savannah and May getting engaged. So it honestly feels a little weird being in here. I know like this is part of my house, it shouldn't feel weird, but I don't know, it just feels like a long time since I've properly sat down here and just talked with you guys. I've really been enjoying some much needed time off. I've just been like reflecting on everything in my life, thinking about how appreciative I am of the things I have. Everything in my life is really wonderful right now. And it made me think a lot about you guys and what I have here. And I realized that this week is my one year YouTube anniversary. I was actually really caught off guard by the fact that it's been an entire year already. It somehow feels like it's been a million years and no time at all since I've started this. And to be fair, I am guesstimating a little bit as far as the anniversary itself. I believe I started posting regularly between like the last couple weeks of September and the very beginning of October, but I did film those videos like way, way, way ahead of time before they were posted. So I think this week is a good middle ground where I'll be happy to celebrate. And so to celebrate this one year anniversary of me being here with you guys on the channel, I wanted to do a little bit of a fun YouTuber tag question list with you guys. If you've been on my channel for a while, you will probably notice that we have quite a few new subscribers, so I thought it would be fun to just talk a little bit about me, just introduce myself, let you guys know what I'm about, more stuff about my personal life, more stuff about what it's been like making this YouTube channel. So I hope you'll stick around and enjoy that for the rest of the video. But before we jump right in, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here with me on this journey. I never thought in a million years I would ever even reach a hundred subscribers. And then we hit a thousand and now we're at 2000. And every day I am just so, first of all, shocked. <laughs> and second of all, incredibly grateful to all of you for sticking around and enjoying my content and giving me such a wonderful reason to keep doing this and working hard and being creative. And I just thank you so much. And if this happens to be your first video on the channel, thank you so much for being here. If you do like this video while you're watching, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to stick around for more kawaii content, I post every Monday and Thursday for you guys. Well, I think that is enough of an intro. Let's jump into some questions. All right, first question, nice and easy. What is my name? My name is Heather or Heather Lynn, or as my husband likes to say when he wants to annoy me, Heather Lynn. But of course here on YouTube, you'll know me as Sweetie Sprout or commonly just Sweetie. Makes me feel nice when y'all call me that. Next, how old am I? So I actually just turned 29 years old. I did do a video on my 29th birthday party. I will link that up above for you guys if you wanna check it out. My birthday is on August 20th. I am a Leo, if you couldn't already tell. Next is, what are my hobbies? So obviously being here on YouTube is a huge hobby of mine. I really do enjoy it. It's been a great passion of mine for the last year. But some other things that I enjoy are I enjoy collecting anime figurines. I do also have a video about that that I am particularly proud of, so I will link that up above. I have a pretty vast collection of anime figurines, you could say. Obviously Lolita is a big hobby of mine as well. It's pretty much the whole reason I started out here on YouTube. But I also like doing little arts and crafts. Um, I did cosplay for a really long time, so I love to sew and just do little like handcrafts like knitting and crocheting. So I really just like to do things that are cozy and easy to do and like repetitive. So knitting and sewing and stuff like that really works for me. Next is, what is my channel about? Well, I would say most of the content on this channel is going to be geared toward the Lolita fashion community, but I do also really love making content just about cute kawaii stuff in general. Um, I do make videos about anime figurines as well. I love to do like shopping haul unboxings of just like cute clothes, sometimes Lolita, sometimes just daily kawaii stuff that I like to wear. And now that I can go out more with being vaccinated, I would love to do more like travel, getting out and about vlogs, still probably wearing Lolita and like being mostly involved with kawaii fashion because that's the heart of this channel. But I would love to do some more things in the future. I really enjoy ASM myself, so maybe I could do some fun like Lolita ASMR themed videos. I love to bake. I have a series that I would love to do about 
making baked goods that are designed after Lolita dress prints. So I have some more ideas in here. It really just depends on what you guys like. So if you have anything you would like to see from me on this channel in the future, definitely let me know down below. Ooh, this is a good one. Where do you see yourself in your YouTube channel in five years? Hmm, let me, let me dream a little bit here. So in five years, I don't necessarily have like a subscriber goal in mind at all. I would love for the channel to have grown successfully. And most of all, I would love to be traveling and showing you guys a bunch of like Lolita hotspots over the United States, whether that's popular spots for high tea in the area or just places that are Lolita friendly for like photos or going out with your local calm or just your friends. I would love to do like a Lolita tourism kind of leg of my channel. I would also love to do that internationally. As some of you might know, I do have a trip to Japan coming up in the future. It's been planned since 2019 and it's obviously on hold with the panorama happening. So I think I would love to start with Japan and just show you guys a bunch of wonderful Lolita content internationally and then also within the United States. Next question is, what inspired you to start making videos? So probably one of the biggest proponents of me starting this channel was just being cooped up in my apartment all day because of the panini happening and I needed to do something to keep myself sane. My entire department at work lost our job at the very start of COVID, we were all laid off. So I was unemployed, had nothing to do, couldn't go outside, was like majorly depressed, honestly. And so I wanted to do something creative that would make me feel good and give me an outlet to do something and maybe even turn into something successful someday. I had really struggled for a long time with feeling like I didn't have a purpose in my life. I didn't and I don't have a career. I didn't finish college. I didn't feel like I had found my calling in life at all. And by doing this, I finally feel like I'm on the right path there. So not only was doing this just a way to give myself something to do to take up my time, but it also fulfilled this really important part of me that I had been looking for for a long time. And uh, I'm very glad it worked out that way. I've been working since I was 15 years old. I know what it's like to do the same job day in, day out and hate it. And I'm finally doing something that while doesn't pay my bills yet, it's something that I truly love and fulfills me in ways I didn't even know were possible. Oh, this is a good one. Who are some of your favorite YouTubers? So I actually first got into YouTube several years ago. Oh God, when was it? I think it was back in 2016 is when I actually started watching YouTube regularly and the channel that got me into it was actually H3 Productions. I feel like probably all of you have probably had to have heard of H3H3. H3. They've got a podcast now. They used to have a couple of channels and I've been a huge fan over the years. I really love them. It's probably most of the content that I watch on YouTube these days. It's nice just to throw on in the background. I also really love the channel Charlotte in Japan. She is a Canadian who has lived in Japan for over 10 years. She does a lot of work with another channel called Tokyo Creative and they just make a bunch of wonderful content around Japan. She takes us to different cities and also just like cute daily life stuff. Highly recommend her if you've never checked her out. I am also a big fan of a little channel you might have heard about here before called May's Mortem. May makes really cool content centered around cults and mysteries, unsolved crimes, occult stuff, while also wearing Lolita. She does excellent research and she's super cute to look at, so you absolutely must go check her out. All right, we're kind of getting to the end here, guys, but the next question is, what is the best thing about YouTube? I'm gonna take that as in like, what's the best part about being a YouTuber? And I have to say the best part about being a YouTuber so far is interacting with you guys. I love that no matter how my day is going, if I'm doing really well or I need a little pick me up, I can go into my creator studio and there's always a super nice comment from one of you guys for me to read. I feel very lucky that I haven't had any issues with like people being mean or really trolling me or anything like that. You guys are so supportive and you make my day all the time. Ooh, next one is, have you ever met anyone from YouTube in real life? 
Yes, I've actually met two YouTubers that I have followed for a long time. The first one I met was Video Game Dunky. I know Dunky's quite far removed from my Lolita content, but he is a comedy YouTuber who mostly talks about video games, and I've been watching him for such a long time, probably almost the same amount that I've been watching H3, and him and his now wife Leah are so cute together, I love them, and I was actually at PAX South a couple years ago, I think, and I never thought they would come because they live up north, and I was walking down the aisles with, uh, May was actually with me, we were cosplaying from Doki Doki Literature Club, if you know that video game, and we were turning the corner, and I saw Dunky and his wife, and I think my spirit actually left my body. I was like hyperventilating and shaking. I was honestly so embarrassed <laughs> because I always thought I'd be the kind of person where if I met like a celebrity or someone that I was a fan of, I would play it cool, I would be calm and polite, but I literally like shuffled over to him and was like, um, Dunky, Mr. Dunky, would you mind if I took a photo with you? And then the second YouTuber I met is from the makeup side of the world. I got to meet Manny MUA at a meetup at Morphe last, no, probably two years ago. I don't know. That whole Panini year is just gone and confuses me in a lot of ways. So yeah, I got to meet Manny and he was super fun and nice and May came with me as well and we actually bore Lolita to go meet him. I definitely do still have that photo on Instagram so I'll pop it in here as well. All right, second to last question here, guys. Do your friends and family support you in being a YouTuber? That is a good question. I guess it depends on what your definition of support means. Obviously, my friends have been an incredible support system. I know they watch all my videos, they leave comments, they talk to me about my videos I've posted, and that means the world to me. And as far as my family, they are definitely supportive of me. Like, they love that I'm doing something creative, they think that I'm really suited for work like this, but I don't think they necessarily watch any of my videos, which is like, fine, I get it. I mean, this is a very niche hobby I'm part of. I make very niche content that I don't necessarily think people their age would be very interested in. But as far as like, are they supportive of me? Absolutely. And the very last question I'm going to answer is, do you have any advice for new YouTubers? I feel kind of weird commenting on something like this because I myself am a new YouTuber, but I guess that probably makes me a little more qualified to give advice because I'm in it right now. And I guess if I had to give some sound advice, it would be to just enjoy what you're doing. Don't try to rush to any kind of finish line as far as like, oh, when I reach this subscriber count, I'll be happy. When I make this amount of money, I'll be successful. When I get this many views on something, that means that I'm good at what I'm doing and that I have value. Numbers obviously play a large role in what you're gonna see on the back end of your YouTube channel. And it can be a little overwhelming, especially when you're starting off. Maybe you won't see the numbers that you want immediately. And I have to tell you, try not to pay attention to that at first and just focus on enjoying what you're doing and feeling happy and fulfilled with yourself. Because if you're not making content that fills you with joy and makes you happy to make, first of all, I think that's gonna translate into the work you're doing and it's not going to reach people the way that it should, but also you're just gonna have a bad time. From what I learned in doing my own research at first, because when you're first starting out, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot of content to digest. But what I did learn is that until around the 35 video mark, like you've uploaded 35 videos, the numbers that you're seeing aren't necessarily going to be an accurate representation of your channel. Basically the algorithm needs a solid chunk of data to analyze before it starts giving you proper feedback and like recommending your videos properly. It's a whole thing. So if you're just starting out or you're wanting to start out, please, please, please just make stuff that you enjoy, that you feel good about and the people will come. And even now sitting at around 2,000 subscribers, that's what I like to tell myself too. Sometimes I make a video and it doesn't perform nearly as well as anything I've posted. Sometimes it's a stinker. Sometimes you guys really love it or the algorithm really loves it and pops it off. But in the end, 
I'm making stuff that makes me happy, that makes me feel good, that's something that I would like to watch, and I think that's the most important thing. I really couldn't have imagined all of this happening when I first started uploading to YouTube. I should probably go back and watch some of my old content just to appreciate myself and how far I've come and maybe I'll do a reaction video actually to some of my very first videos. That might be fun. If you'd like to see that, let me know down below. But it's been a really wonderful year here with you guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. I've had the time of my life so far and I'm not gonna stop anytime soon. So you're stuck with me. Well, that's enough mushy stuff. I hope you guys are feeling the love. I certainly feel the love from you every single day. I'm gonna go watch some of my old videos and try not to cringe quite a bit. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Here's to another year on the channel. Bye.